Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, I was fortunate enough to get an early access to the Elementary OS Juno beta on Wednesday night, and I'd like to thank the team at Elementary to allow me to prepare this video in advance. So, this is obviously a beta, if the wallpaper wasn't clear enough, and it's not ready for production use. But I'm gonna try and go through it with you guys, and show you the changes I've noticed. This won't of course cover everything, but I'll try to be as comprehensive as possible. First is the desktop. The first thing you'll notice is the Juno Beta wallpaper, but that's not what I want you to look at. In the top panel, you'll notice the Applications menu has a little search icon to make it more visible. Once you open it, it behaves the same as you're used to with your list of applications. Then comes the settings. So first, we'll take a look at the hotkeys. Now you can change the hotkey combination that will bring up the application menu in the settings app. In the keyboard section, I can change the behavior of the command key or windows key on a PC to bring up either a list of keyboard shortcuts or the applications menu. If you'd like to change this uh, keyboard combination to something else, you can open the shortcuts tab and go to system to select the key combination you'd like. This whole keyboard shortcuts area has a new design and allows you to easily customize each key combination. You also get a new entry in the Security and Privacy tab of the system settings. This will allow you to turn on or off location services on a per-app basis to make sure that your location data is protected. Nightlight is now stored in the Displays tab of the system settings. It allows you to change the color hue of your screen following the time of day to reduce blue light emissions. It is a really handy feature I use all the time on my Mac at work and I'm glad to get it on my laptop at home as well as soon as Juno is released. Uh, you also get some nice improvements to the mouse and trackpad, uh, especially the uh, fine-tuning of the pointer acceleration. Uh, this can now make it a little bit easier to reach those uh, far-fetched corners on your big screen, and uh, this will allow you to tune the curve of acceleration for your pointer, which has been a regular complaint on uh, distributions using the X server. The sound tab has been changed as well, with clearer presentation and easily accessible balance and output volume sliders, to change those on the fly. Now onto the default apps, and let's kick it off with Epiphany. Epiphany has changed a lot internally with speedier page loading and faster JavaScript rendering. It now has a download manager that stores your download history and uh, looks a lot nicer than what you used to have. It also allows syncing with your Firefox account for bookmarks, credentials and history, which is probably going to make this browser my default on Juno. Uh, now, Scratch also has been through a lot of changes. It first it has been renamed Code, and uh, it has a brand new icon. And uh, it's basically now a full-fledged IDE for coding, with the ability to make the background darker, select syntactic coloring, jump to a line directly, uh, select uh, the indentation, and uh, it still has a lot of plugins to enable, for example, a browser view to preview your code. Terminal gets some new color profiles to make it a little bit more personal. And uh, let's move on to the App Center. So the App Center on this public beta only displays apps from the standard repositories at the moment, since the app developers will need to resubmit their elementary specific apps for this new version of elementary OS. I can't show you the new behavior of paid apps, which will not update automatically if you've entered zero in the amount field. Uh, you'll have to update them manually to remind you that you can still thank the developer for their work, Photos now has a dark mode enabled by default to make your pictures the center of attention. Camera now has a timer to delay taking a picture by a few seconds to strike that perfect pose before you realize it's too late. Now onto the installer. The installer is still the same version as in Loki. The elementary OS devs have been working with System76 to design a new one, but they didn't have enough time to test it properly and adapt it to elementary OS, so they chose to leave it out for the moment. I hope we can see more on this topic for a point release sometime in the future, but the uh, screen captures looked very, very promising. And that's about it for the first things I had noticed. Uh, obviously, these are not all the changes we'll be seeing in Juno, and let's not forget all the bug fixes that are uh, in this release as well. Elementary OS Juno is based on Ubuntu LTS 18.04, so it's going to have more recent versions of all packages used on Loki, such as newer versions of GIMP, Kdenlive, Inkscape and many others, and this should make your daily use of Elementary all the more comfortable. Uh, Performance-wise, I can't say I've noticed any regression. If anything, Juno feels snappier than Loki, especially while opening the applications menu. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of the first public beta. It is already out. You can download it from the Elementary OS website. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to try it out. But do not forget, it is a public beta. It still has bugs and glitches and it will crash on you or delete some of your files. Only developers or highly technical users should uh, try it out, install it on their systems. If you want to play with it a little bit, just create a live USB key. Uh, if you have questions about that, I might put out a video explaining on how to do that. But do not install it in place of your Loki install, because uh, it is not ready for prime time use yet. The Elementary team has a Medium blog post about this. You should probably read it carefully before jumping in. In the meantime, I'll keep you posted on all new developments on Juno, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!